We received a message from our pastor late yesterday afternoon informing us that she was ill. And uh, we're very concerned about that and hope that she recovers very swiftly. But she asked if we would uh, pinch hit for her today, so you've got a pinch hitter standing before you right now. I hope I can hit the ball <laughs> when the pitcher throws it. Anyway, here we are. The, the lectionary passage for today, you might want to look up and have in front of you. It's Luke chapter 17, beginning with the fifth verse. Luke chapter 17, beginning with the fifth verse. This is a, a, a strange passage. And we wonder, we can wonder why Luke put it in. Why did he include this as in his gospel account? Well, I, I've been pondering that ever since I came across it. And I found myself wondering why anyone would have left it out. Luke is telling an important story here. He spoke to many different audiences, as you know. Sometimes, in fact, he spoke the most in the Gospel of Luke to his disciples. But he spoke to other audiences, too, sometimes to 5,000 people sometimes to his neighbors. And in this case, he is speaking to some wealthy landowners and people who employ others, pay them and order them about. It makes a very interesting story when we start to take it apart because these wealthy landowners and slaveholders and employers asked a very dangerous thing of Jesus. They asked him, increase our faith. Wow. You could ask me that and not much would happen. But if you ask Jesus that, my land, what a dangerous thing to ask. Increase our faith. These are people who were accustomed to accumulating things, counting things, getting bigger and bigger barns. Jesus talked about people like that. And here he is addressing them and responding to their request. Increase our faith. I don't think they knew what they were asking. Because according to this passage, According to Luke chapter 17, beginning with verse 5, those people were never the same again. Something happened to them. Jesus increased their faith. <laughs> wow, what a thing to ask. Who is he talking to? Landowners, masters, People who don't have much regard for those who work for them. People who, according to this passage, would never ask them to eat until they'd finished all their household chores. But here Jesus says that that happened. People who the masters would never thank. But here Jesus says that happened. People who aren't thanked for their work? What a nasty thing to do. Well, Jesus was expecting a miracle. And one apparently happened. Between verses 9 and 10, something happened that we don't know about that changed these people. They started off as plantation arrogant plantation owners, they ended up as humble servants. Wow. 
Well, Luke has addressed this <clears throat> to us <clears throat> because it's easy for us to fall into the ways of the world around us and become arrogant ourselves, arrogant masters. In this case, the arrogant masters are uprooted from their stubborn assumptions about their superiority. I'm superior to you because I have such and such a job or such and such a title or such and such a race or such and such a house or such and such additional property or such and such a bank account. That makes me superior to you. Baloney. Jesus is lifting up the value of all people, all people, especially those who need to be thanked for their work. To increase our faith is to allow Christ to transform all of us, all parts of us, even our attitude toward ourselves and toward others. To increase our faith is to allow Christ to transform all of us, all parts, so we no longer think too highly of ourselves or too lowly of ourselves. We know we are worthwhile persons who have value in the eyes of God. We are worthwhile persons doing worthwhile things in this world. And we deserve to be respected and trusted. Our sense of self-worth and importance that sense is always enhanced when we're in the presence of Jesus Christ. That sense of self-worth. So the story of these people who were transformed when they asked Jesus to increase their faith is our story too. We say to him, increase our faith and he reminds us that we are children of God made in the image of God with value and worth that God has given to us all of us all of us seek appreciation and recognition and a sense of, of trust from others and a feeling that other people accept and, uh, and recognize us. All of us are people who want to be important to those who are important to us and to be seen by them as persons of worth who are respected by them. And of course, most importantly, by God. I was, I remember attending a celebration dinner years and years ago as a seminary student when the president of the Massachusetts Congregational Conference retired. And they had this big dinner for him somewhere in Boston. And person after person stood up and made a speech saying what a great person this man had been and how, what great help he had done and what great works he had accomplished in his life. But one person stood up and made this speech starting off this way. He turned to this retiring man 
and said, don't inhale. They've said too much. They've made it up. You're, you're a good man, but you're not that good. Don't inhale or you'll get distorted. Just accept who you are, the gifts you have been given, the work you have done. Your good works will follow you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. And we love you. That was enough. That was enough. So, a dangerous thing happened that day. When these landowners, these wealthy people who ignored and put down those who were of lower social status than themselves, they said to Jesus, <laughs> increase our faith. And he did. Amen.